was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless, upright, fearing God and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions also were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. He was the greatest of all the men of the East. sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man fearing God and turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, then he will surely curse you to your face.
Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. Now on the day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabians attacked and took them. They also slew the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head. fell to the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Through all this Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth a blameless and upright man fearing God and turning away from evil. And he still holds fast his integrity, although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a piece of broken pottery to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes.
and his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all of this, Job did not sin with his lips. When Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite, heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they lifted up their eyes at a distance and did not recognize him, they raised their voices and wept. And each of them tore his robe, and they threw dust over their heads toward the sky. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him, for they saw that his pain was very great. Afterward, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, Let the day perish on which I was to be born. May that day be darkness. Let not God above care for it, nor light shine on it. Let darkness and black gloom claim it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize it. Behold, let that night be barren. Let no joyful shout enter it, for my groaning comes at the sight of my food. and my cries pour out like water. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Why did I not perish at birth, and die as I came from the womb? For now I would have lain down and been quiet. I would have slept then. I would have been at rest. Why is light given to him who suffers, and life to the bitter of soul? who long for death, but there is none, and digs for it more than for hidden treasures. Why is life given to those with no future, those who God has surrounded with difficulties?
Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, If one ventures a word with you, will you become impatient? Behold, you have counseled many, and you have strengthened weak hands. But now when trouble has come to you, you are impatient and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember now, who ever perished being innocent? According to what I have seen, those who plow iniquity and those who sow trouble harvest it. Can mankind be just before God? Can a man be pure before his Maker? He puts no trust even in his servants, and against his angels he charges error. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. Their poison my spirit drinks. The terrors of God are lined up against me. Oh, that I might have my request, that God would grant my desire. I wish he would crush me. I wish he would reach out his hand and kill me. At least I can take comfort in this. Despite the pain, I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I should endure? Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Do I have any power to help myself now that success has been driven from me? For the despairing man there should be kindness from his friend, so that he does not forsake the fear of the Almighty. My brothers, you have proved as unreliable as a seasonal brook that overflows its banks in the spring. Teach me and I will be silent, and show me how I have erred. How painful are honest words, but what does your argument prove? Do you mean to correct what I say and treat my desperate words as wind? Now please look at me, and see if I lie to your face. Desist now. Is there any wickedness on my lips? Can my mouth not discern malice? Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me by visions, so that my soul would choose suffocation, death rather than my pains. Leave me alone, for my days are but a breath.
Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you say these things, and the words of your mouth be a mighty wind? Does God pervert justice? Or does the Almighty pervert what is right? If your sons sinned against him, then he delivered them into the power of their transgression. If you would seek God and beg for the compassion of the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, surely now he would rouse himself for you and restore your righteous estate. How long will you hunt for words? Show understanding, and then we can talk. Indeed, the light of the wicked goes out, and the flame of his fire gives no light. What is man that you magnify him, and that you are concerned about him, and that you examine him every morning, and try him every moment? Will you never look away from me, or let me alone even for an instant? If my sorrow could be weighed with all my misery, it would surely be more than the sands of all the seas. Have I sinned? What have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you set me as your target, so that I am a burden to myself? Why then do you not pardon my transgression, and take away my iniquity? For now I will lie down in the dust, and you will seek me, but I will not be. And Zophar the Naamathite answered, Shall a multitude of words go unanswered? And a talkative man be acquitted? And shall you scoff and none rebuke? For you have said, My teaching is pure, and I am innocent in your eyes. Oh, how I wish God would speak and open his lips against you. For he knows false men, and he sees iniquity without investigating. If you would direct your heart right, and spread out your hand to him, if iniquity is in your hand, put it far away. Then, free of fault, you will stand firm and without fear. Then Job answered, How can a mere mortal prove their innocence before God? If one wished to dispute with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand times. His wisdom is profound, his power is vast. Who has defied him without harm? It is God who removes the mountains. They know not how, when he overturns them in his anger.
shakes the earth out of its place, who commands the sun not to shine, and sets a seal upon the stars. Who alone stretches out the heavens and tramples down the waves of the sea? Who makes the bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the chambers of the south? Who could say to him, What are you doing? God will not turn back his anger. Even the monsters of the sea are crushed beneath his feet. How then can I answer him and choose my words before him? For though I were right, I could not answer. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. If I called and he answered me, I could not believe that he was listening to my voice. For he bruises me with a tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to get my breath, but saturates me with bitterness. If it is a matter of power, behold, he is the strong one. And if it is a matter of justice, who can summon him? Though I am righteous, my mouth will condemn me. Though I am guiltless, he will declare me guilty. I am guiltless. I do not take notice of myself. I despise my life. It is all the same. Therefore I say, he destroys the guiltless and the wicked. If only there were a mediator between us, someone who could bring us together. The mediator could make God stop beating me, and I would no longer live in terror of his punishment. Then I could speak to him without fear. But I cannot do that in my own strength. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb? and as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness. For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, this far and no farther will you come. Have you ever in your life commanded the morning and caused the dawn to know its place? Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you understood the expanse of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place? That you may take it to its territory and that you may discern the path to its home. Where is the way that the light is divided? Or the east wind scattered on the earth? Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb has come the ice and the frost of heaven? Who has given it birth? Can you bind the chains of Pleiades? Or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth a constellation in its season? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens, or fix their rule over the earth? Can you hunt the prey for the lion, when they crouch in their dens and lie in wait in their lair? Who prepares for the raven its nourishment, when its young cry to God, and wander about without food? Do you give the horse his might? 
Do you clothe his neck with a mane? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? Then the Lord said to Job, Will the fault finder contend with the Almighty? Let him who reproves God answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am insignificant. What can I reply to you? I lay my hand on my mouth. Once I have spoken, and I will not answer. Even twice, and I will add nothing more. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm and said, Now brace yourself like a man. I will ask you, and you must answer them. Will you really discredit my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Who then is he that can stand before me? Who has given to me that I should repay him? Whatever is under the whole heaven is mine. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You ask, Who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. You said, Listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. It came about after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, offer up a burnt offering for yourselves, and my servant Job will pray for you. The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. After this, Job lived 140 years. And Job died an old man and full of days.